there is lots of ups and downs, steps backwards and forwards. The secret of change is to keep going and learn from the relapses. Unlock possibilities by changing your mindset. You will expand what's possible for you, for the ones around you, for the world. You're moving into a land of both blind spots and learning, of things and ideas. You just crossed over into the mindset zone. Join your guide, Anna Malikia, founder of Solo Biz Academy, the director of education for Book Yourself Solid and a PhD in psychology. The show you are about to listen is backed by popular demand from the Mindset Zone Archive Vault. To get all new episodes, make sure you subscribe via your favorite podcast app and visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com, it's .zone. There you can find the episode archive, show notes, and other amazing resources, including how to four times your success so you can work smarter, not harder, and learn how to leverage your talents to make a bigger impact while enjoying the process. All at Mindset.Zone. Hi, Anna Malikian here, and the topic of this episode is learning and change. And how can we learn from our mistakes and missteps? And I made a mistake recently in the episode that was titled Understanding Change and Why It's So Difficult to Change. There, I spoke about a specific model to explain change that was developed by a team of psychologists in the 1990s, namely Prozac, Nocross, and Di Clemente. And I said that according to this model, if someone wants to change a habit or behavior, they will go through a five-stage process. And my mistake was describe this model as having only five stages because the authors, they speak about six stages. The book that popularizes this model that is titled Changing for Good, a revolutionary six-stage program for overcoming bad habits and moving your life positively forward is clear in the subtitle of the book that is six stages. And when I was publishing episode 23, I realized my mistake. Uh, And I changed immediately in the show notes from five stages to six stages. And I could have postponed the release of the episode, yet I decided to go ahead. Go ahead and publish it. (laughs) Because first, I'm on a mission to embrace my courage to be imperfect. And don't let my perfectionism stop me from doing things. And you can listen to episode 16 to know more about this and my struggles (laughs) with perfectionism and how I'm fighting back. And I also, to be true, I knew that I could do another episode to correct my mistake. So here I am. And for the record, the change process from Prozac, Norcross, and De Clemente has six stages. Stage one is pre-contemplation. And if we are at that stage, we don't really see any need to change. Then there is stage two. Contemplation, as the name suggests, we start to realize that there is something that we are better off 
changing. Then if things go well, we can move on to stage three, preparation. We start to devise a plan with concrete action steps and implementation dates. And then we can go to stage four that has all the glory, action. We do it. And very important, we can move to stage five, maintenance, where we consolidate the new habits, behaviors, and the new patterns. And very important, stage six that I spoke in the in that episode, but I really didn't gave it the relevance that it deserves. That stage six that the authors call it recycling, learning from relapse or termination. But I like more the recycling, learning from relapse. Because this last stage and the name of recycling, learning, really remind us that change is not a linear process. I'm describing here stage one, and then we go to stage two, then to stage three, then four, four, five, and six. But there is lots of ups and downs, steps backwards and forwards. The secret of change is to keep going and learn from the relapses. In fact, the uh, Prozac, Nocross, and Di Clemente, they speak about several lessons we can learn from this last stage, from learning from these relapses. For instance, we know, and there is research about this in psychology, that it's very rare to change a habit on our first attempt. So relapse is a normal occurrence for most people. We also know that trial and error is not a very effective method. So if we keep learning by trial and error, we probably are going to be in this recycling stage for a longer time. But if instead we learn from other people who have done it, be able to change, to master the change we are trying to achieve, we have a better chance to succeed. And other lessons is that if we relapse, that means, and I love this reframing, if we relapse, that means that we have done some action. And we really have just to keep going, keep learning and translating that learning into new actions. And we'll be able to create better habits in our lives. So how does knowing that relapse is common and even a part of the change process help you move forward? For me, one of the biggest lessons is to remind myself to see relapse as a opportunity to learn something new. To pick myself up again and keep moving forward. And this reminds me of a skill that... Um, um, People have people that achieve big things. They have this this skill, and they develop. They have, they they have this skill very developed in themselves. And I spoke in episode three, failure and the way to success. Uh, that we must build a strong failure resilience if we want to succeed. And I gave examples of that there. And even in my interview with Andrea Waltz in episode 22, uh, it shows clearly that the image of the, her book, Go For No, one of the examples that uh, the book illustrates in a very clear way, is that that image of the fork in the road with one road that leads to success and the other to failure, 
that image is very misleading because success happens if we are willing to endure failures. It's part of the path relapse. So we can be very lucky and get successes without any failures, but it's not unusual. And we really have to learn to, to have this resilience and to keep moving forward. So I would love to hear your comments about this and uh, what you learn from your own experience about trying to change. This is like the third episode in a row where I'm speaking and focus on change. Um, the first one was episode 23, Understanding Change and Why It's So Difficult to Change, where I speak in more detail about the other steps or stages of the change process. Then I have, I dedicate episode 24 to an interview that is all about stop changing and start shifting. And now sometimes th that small changes in perspective can help us keep moving forward and seeing results that stay in long in the long term and i think was important to do these episodes <laughs> to um correct uh, my mistake and really to underline the importance of this last stage and of how much we can learn in this process so if you want to keep having a weekly mindset workout, <laughs> make sure that you are subscribed to this podcast via iTunes or Stitcher or whatever podcast uh, app you use to keep uh, your listening to your podcasts. Or if it's easier for you, you can listen to it directly from my website. Just go to mindset.zone forward slash info. So instead of dot com is dot zone, mindset.zone forward slash info. And to give you the extra incentive to visit my website, go to mindset.zone forward slash free stuff. There you'll find different resources. And you always can write me at Anna at and any such a n a at mindset dot zone telling me what you love to see there in that resource page in my website as well as any comment about my podcast any questions any topics you like me to focus here grateful that you are here that you cross over into the mindset zone expand what's possible for you, for the ones around you, for the world. Thank you for listening and remember to visit mindset.zone. Yes, instead of .com is .zone. There you can find all the episodes and other amazing resources. As always, I'm so grateful that you have crossed over into the mindset zone. Spend what's possible for you, for the ones around you, for the world.